As one of God Usopp's most trusted followers, I do command thee to subscribeth to the Church of the Ground Line Review, which will result in regular God Usopp content being uploaded straight into your YouTube feed. Do not disappoint our deity now. Hello and welcome to the Grand Line Review, and more specifically, welcome to One Piece 101, the series that breaks down everyone and everything in the One Piece world. And today, we will be examining quite possibly the most profoundly impactful character within the entire series, being God Usopp. God Usopp, to put it bluntly, is nothing short of a marvel of a man, who has been described in the series as the closest thing this world has to a real-life Adonis, and who is admired by all individuals of all genders and all races across the One Piece world. However, things did not start out this way, and God Usopp's journey to deity-level recognition was a slow affair that begins on his homeland of Syrup Village. Here, Usopp was born, the son of God Yasop and Goddess Banchina, respectively. However, after realizing that they had created the perfect being, both Yasop and Banchina realized how utterly meaningless their own lives were and promptly retreated from the human realm, leaving Usopp as the last remaining true god on the planet. Now, rather notably, Syrup Village is something of an Eden within the One Piece world, a place of infinite majesty and riches, and without the protection of Yasop and Banchina, it became a prime target for pirates to attempt to plunder. Now, I say attempt because what they did not account for was God Usopp in child form, who immediately took up his duty as the guardian deity of the island, warning people each and every morning of an incoming pirate attack. However, in each and every case, Usopp had always swiftly defeated the pirates by the time the townsfolk had so much as stepped outside. And as a result, God Usopp developed quite the following, gaining three lofty apostles in the form of Ninjin, Piman, and Tamanegi, all three of whom were ordained into the status of demigodhood and trained directly by Usopp himself, and are thus three of the most highly skilled and terrifying combatants in the entire series. But it would also be around this time that Usopp would fall in love with a human female within the village by the name of Kaya, who in the future would go on to ascend to become Goddess Kaya, partial ruler of the great 3000 worlds alongside Usopp. But that is a story for another time. As it happens, one pirate had managed to infiltrate Zero Village, a man by the name of Kuro, the second smartest person in the entirety of East Blue, who then proceeded to sack the island with his crew, the Black Cat Pirates. Or he would have, had Usopp not engaged in his super advanced observation Haki and seen this future eventuating two weeks in advance, thus positioning himself perfectly to deal with Kuro and his crew within the blink of an eye. However, there were some spectators of this event, a band of good pirates who went by the name of the Straw Hats, led by Monkey D. Luffy, a man who held a rather ambitious but comparatively modest dream of becoming the Pirate King. Although after seeing this display of utter dominance, Luffy immediately relinquished his position as captain and begged Usopp to lead them across the Grand Line and into the New World. And in this moment, Usopp saw the bigger picture. Yet Yes, he had kept Syrup Village perfectly safe, but what about the rest of the planet? And as such, he accepted Luffy's offer and became the captain of the Straw Hat Pirates, a name which Usopp kept in honor of its former captain, current first mate, and future best friend Luffy. And so Usopp set sail on a grand adventure, first making port at the floating restaurant of Baratier, where one of Usopp's underlings, Zoro, was attacked by a man claiming to be the world's greatest swordsman, Dracul Miho. However, in a truly stunning display, Usopp saved Zoro's life at the last second by coating his slender nose in armament Taki and blocking Mihawk's, frankly, pitiful strike. After this point, a foul smell passed across the battlefield, which was the result of Dracul Mihawk soiling himself in pure terror before awarding Usopp the title of the world's greatest swordsman, despite the fact that he was not a swordsman. And after seeing this, a talented young chef named Sanji became smitten with God Usopp and volunteered to join the Straw Hat Pirates to provide Usopp with nourishment worthy of a supreme being. And it is here that the legend of God Usopp would grow exponentially, as his exploits included single-handedly defeating a group of fishermen terrorizing the Konomi Islands, swiftly dispatching a marine captains with the power of a smoke logia fruit, and even being recognized by the most wanted man in the world, Dragon, who after witnessing the deeds of Usopp, made the decision to disband his revolutionary army right then and there, knowing that this world was in safe hands. From here, Usopp and his loyal followers embarked into the Ground Line, the most dangerous stretch of water in the world, where Usopp immediately made friends with a giant whale, but was also approached by a princess of a nearby kingdom. This princess, Vivi, had heard the legend of Usopp's deeds in East Blue, and begged him to help her defeat a man by the name of Sir Crocodile, who was threatening to plunge her kingdom of Alabasta into civil war. And of course, Usopp, being the upstanding paragon of morality he is, agreed without hesitation, and so conjured a pet reindeer to lead the crew to the desert nation of Alabasta. Upon reaching the island, they immediately confronted Crocodile. However, there was no time to waste, and in a moment of sheer heroism, Usopp's first mate Luffy volunteered to face Crocodile alone to allow Usopp to focus all of his energy on summoning a giant crab to ferry everyone to the capital city. City. Although in a tragic twist of fate, Luffy would be slain by Crocodile.
crocodile, which prompted Usopp into a fit of rage, whereby he took to the sky and released a massive explosion of pure deity energy, which was enough to consume an entire city if he wasn't careful. However, this did manage to immediately defeat all of Crocodile's henchmen, leaving only the big boss himself. And whilst he had proven immune to godly energy, Usopp zeroed in on Crocodile's one weakness, which was his complete lack of self. And so in a brilliant maneuver, Usopp performed his ultimate finishing technique known as Usopp Doppelganger, where he literally became Crocodile, causing the original Crocodile to have a profound crisis of self, and he mentally snapped like a twig, becoming defeated and saving the kingdom. As word of Usopp's latest deed spread, the remaining seven warlords of the sea immediately resigned their positions, not wanting to risk potentially incurring the wrath of Usopp, thus ending a long reign of terror upon the seas. Meanwhile, Usopp spent his time being repeatedly happiness punched in the ornate baths of Alabaster. And you know, at this point in his life, it would seem that there was only one man willing to challenge Usopp, a fellow god by the name of Enel, who then summoned Usopp and his crew to a heavenly sky island to engage in fierce combat. The following battle lasted well over a week, with Enel proving to be the most powerful figure that Usopp had ever faced. And it even got to the point where Usopp had to take the match seriously. And in order to counter the master of lightning, Usopp changed his atomic structure to mimic the properties of rubber, thus making him effectively invincible. And Enel was banished to the moon to live out the rest of his days in the company of small cyborg moon beings. After returning to the mortal realm, Usopp spent three days and nights intensely meditating and focusing his power on upgrading his vessel, the Going Merry, which he eventually evolved into the Thousand Sunny, and also crafted a flamboyant shipwright to take good care of her. However, at this point, the world government were growing tired of Usopp dispelling their power, and as such, they decided to send their most elite cell of assassins to murder him. And after discovering this, Usopp called upon the gods to reverse time. And instead of waiting for the assassins, he took to their homeland of any slobby and brought down a god Usopp-sized buster call that destroyed the entire island, as well as the assassins who were to be sent after him. However, due to messing with time, something that even gods were forbidden from doing, Usopp crafted a split timeline in which he had become a superhero named Soka King, who would go on to topple the world government and lead everyone to the paradise of Sniper Island, which had resided within their hearts all along. But back in what we'll call the canon timeline, Usopp became aware of a man by the name of Portgasty Ace, who had been captured by the Marines and sentenced to execution. Usopp immediately recognized this man as the brother of his former and long past first mate Luffy and decided to make the pilgrimage to Marineford in order to save him. Once he had arrived, Usopp urged Whitebeard, the strongest man in the world, to leave everything to him, after which point Usopp cast a spell on all three Marine Admirals, filling their thoughts with nothing but the idea of having razor blades within their teeth and removing them from combat forever. At this point, Fleet Admiral Sengoku declared that the war was over, knowing that there was no chance of victory against this one man, nay, this one god. Ace then begged Usopp to let him join the crew to pursue Luffy's old dream. But Usopp denied this request, believing that it would be too painful to have a constant reminder of his best friend. Instead, Usopp conjured a reincarnation of Luffy named Sabo, filling Ace with endless joy. But Usopp was still yet to conquer everything in this world. Having brought the seven warlords and the world government to its knees, his final task would be to defeat the four emperors, a group of demigods that had inherited incredible abilities just as he had. And so he decided that to thoroughly prepare himself for this challenge, he would train for two whole years, honing his already hyper advanced skill set before reuniting with his crew and setting sail for the new world. And with his even greater than before god powers, Usopp easily claimed Fishman Island, Punk Hazard, and Dressrosa incorporating them into his new god fleet before heading into Totterland to take on the first of the four emperors, Big Mom. Now, in order to defeat this foe, Usopp was going to need more than simple raw power, and instead he decided to do something unconventional by baking a big cake with his super special god recipe. And after feeding it to Big Mom, it knocked her out and banished her from this realm. His next challenger, the immortal Kaido, proved a far more formidable foe, with his dragon form proving nigh on impossible to kill. And as a result, Usopp had no choice but to briefly abandon his humanity and become a dragon himself in order to effectively combat Kaido in a battle that would become known as the War of the Two Dragons, one of which had a long nose and one of which did not. It was a long name, but it sums it up quite well. And with this in mind, Kaido stood no chance at all. And he too was banished from the mortal realm after Dragon Usopp conjured a mighty ketchup star finishing attack. Two down and two to go, after which point Usopp set his sights on Blackbeard, a man who had the prestige of having consumed two devil fruits, which certainly would have proved difficult to any mortal. However, in response, Usopp decided to absorb literally every devil fruit power in the entire world, including those held by Blackbeard, combining them into the ancient super weapon, Plutonian Asasidon, which obliterated Blackbeard in a single strike. And for the final emperor, Redhead Shanks, upon meeting Usopp, Shanks took off his fleshy mask and revealed himself to actually be God Yasop, who had remained in the human realm 
to ensure the destiny of his son. And as such, Usopp's final challenge was to overcome his own father, which took exactly 10,000 years of non-stop combat. A battle that would dwarf that of even the struggles of the giants. However, with one final very, very well-timed Usopp Wagamu, Yasop would finally fall. Usopp had surpassed him. And not only that, Usopp had become the supreme being, one that possessed godlike power even amongst gods. Although even with this infinite potential, Usopp found himself wanting only one thing, his friend, Monkey D. Luffy. And so Usopp made the ultimate decision to sacrifice all of his power to reshape reality back to the state where this story first began. But with one primary difference, there would no longer be any gods or demigods, and this reality was only going to be inhabited by more. And that included Usopp himself, who was completely stripped of his own power and was reincarnated as a pure human on the island of Syrup Village, where he would grow and wait for the moment that his friend Luffy would arrive on the island. And this time around, Usopp solemnly vowed that he would do everything he could to have his friend achieve his dream. This time, Luffy was going to become the Pirate King, and thus began the story of One Piece. And that pretty much does it for the legendary tale of God Usopp. But what do you guys think? Please do leave your thoughts in the comments below or even join my Discord server. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, then please do go check out some of my other content or even subscribe to the channel for more glorious One Piece business uploaded straight to your YouTube feeds. But for now, this has been the Grand Line Review and happy April Fools.